Hello, everyone. Let's give a couple of minutes more to the people and we will start. Hi, Manu. Hi, Lucas. Let's test your audio. Hi, Hi. Lucas. Hi, everybody. Yeah, looks like both are working. Um, I think that the connection is working well. A lot of people connected already. Let's give uh, one minute or two more, and then we will start. Take a glass of water. Good idea. For those that are asking me if uh, the seminar will be recorded. Yes, it will be recorded and we will uh, publish uh, later in a couple of days once it's ready. But uh, I really invite you to stay tuned and then you can ask questions to, to this uh, amazing panelists we have today. Okay, let's start. Welcome to our webinar uh, of, of January. Sorry, I have a bit of a... Typical noise uh, of a laboratory. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Well, welcome to our webinar uh, of January. Today, uh, we will simulate uh, a full bridge phase here for one kilowatt. And, um, and, uh, and you will see uh, how to simulate the circuit in a great simulator um, and also how to design the magnetic. Our panelists today uh, are uh, Manu, Manu Rutobi from, uh, from Simba. Uh, basically, uh, the technology, the, our online simulator that you will see today that is called Suzuka is based on Simba technology, but also he will be able to answer and explain things about the Simba technology, which is great. And also we have Lucas Nicesa, Nicieza, which is uh, our uh, magnetic designer. He will run the simulation um, and the design of the magnetic. And before uh, starting, we have, uh, well, Manu, we have great news for customers of uh, Simba and, uh, and Frenetic because, uh, yeah, I mean, we are starting the year with a lot of energy and then we want to, to give uh, our customers and users uh, good news for starting the year. Then, uh, from our side, uh, a frenetic online customers and users, they will have uh, uh, one month for free of uh, usability of Suzuka, which is our online simulator. Then uh, you would be able to run all the simulations there and give us feedback and, and well, I hope that you enjoy. And Manu, do you want to call your- Yes, 
your invest to yeah. your customers? Yes. So basically, all uh, the Simba users, including the free um, academic uh, users, uh, would have access to uh, one month of um, Frenetic Online, uh, the full uh, the full package, if I understood correctly. Yeah, that's uh, that's it. And um, if uh, we will send you all the information by email, but um, in the meantime, if uh, anyone uh, is connected and want to access to this uh, to this uh, trial you can write um uh, in the questions your email and and we will take care after this seminar to to contact you and to uh, give uh, access to to the trials then we will review that you are one of uh, the users of simba or frenetic but uh, but uh, you can write your your email in the in the questions and and, um, and that's all we will take care then without any uh, any other comment? Uh, I let the, the two main panelists to start the discussion of the full bridge uh, face uh, design. And yeah, all yours. Okay, thanks, Tema. Um, well, first, before starting with the technical part, uh, Manu, you want to give some introduction about uh, what are you guys doing uh, at Simba or when I can? Start. Yeah. Um, so Simba is a power electronic simulation platform. Um, they, it can be used on many forms, including a desktop classic um, software and a Python module. We have also developed an online version of Simba that is currently used by Frenetic and that you have um, rebranded the Susuka uh, circuit simulator. So it's basically a, a 1D uh, circuit simulator, and we are working with Frenetic about um how simulation can be used to uh help design magnetics what you're going to show today and also um how uh, we can use your platform to model uh, magnetics as well in polytronic simulation okay thank you and then and if you are interested you can check uh on simba.io our website um to, to get a little bit more information okay thank you thank you manu then I will start sharing my screen. Um, Tema, I think you have to make me a hoster. Yeah, now I go. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So today we are going to talk about the phase full bridge converter. Um, we are going to do an example case for the design and simulation uh, of the magnetics for a one kilowatt uh, phase full bridge converter. So, well, basic things about the um, about the phase full bridge that probably everybody in this uh, call now we have. An input state with uh, a bridge with four MOSFETs, and then in the secondary side, we can have either a couple of diodes, synchronous rectifiers, or a full bridge uh, rectifier. Um, this converter is typically used in power levels above 300 watts up to the uh, decence of kilowatts. And let's say that the, the, the simplicity of this converter uh, makes it, uh, let's say, very interesting. Uh, it provides high efficiency because it can achieve zero voltage switching in the primary size uh, switches. And depending on where the output inductor is located, it can be used as a voltage source converter of as a current source converter, um, which means that it can be easily, uh, let's say, parallel. So if you want to have several stages in parallel, this converter allows to do that in an easy way. Now let's uh, let's say forget about the basics and let's go for an example. So we are going to focus uh, this webinar on the design of a one kilowatt uh, converter, where our input voltage uh, we are assuming we are coming from the and this from a PFC. So the input voltage uh, of let's say the DC link it has a range from 370 volts to 425 volts. And then the output voltage of our battery is uh, has a nominal voltage of 48 volts. Um, the output carbon is 20 amp, 21 amps, and the ripple that we can have is 20%. Uh, 
uh, the switching frequency of the converter is 100 kilohertz and our target efficiency is 95% with free convection. So the first decision we need to take is, do we want a center tap or do we want a full bridge rectifier in the secondary side? So here, uh, it depends. Uh, it depends on the current and voltage that you have at the at the secondary side. Basically, if we have uh, the center tap, what we will have is, of course, less amount of components, so it will be cheaper uh, in this in this sense. And the voltage drop uh, that we will have is uh, half of that of the of the full bridge because in the full bridge, of course, we have two diodes, and that's why it's half. In the uh, other way, we will have the peak inverse voltage in the diodes is going to be uh, double than that of the full bridge. Now, if we think on the transformer, um, here the thing is that the diode, the full rectification allows to take a best use of the of the transformer than in the center tab. So let's take a look at this uh, on the simulation of the converter and of the simulation of the magnetics. Here. I have um, Suzuka. Okay, this is uh, the circuit simulator we have been talking about. And um, here we have the center tap configuration, input bridge, our transformer, uh, series inductor that I will talk about this later, our diode rectifier, and the output states, and then the PWN generation based on the output voltage. And we have also the full rectification. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, well, first I'm going to simulate this. And what we are going to do is simulation fin is finished. It takes uh, only 2,056 uh, 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 milliseconds. And what we are going to do is uh, check how are the voltage and current on the transformer. Uh, so I'm going to see how the current looks like in the primary and in the secondary side. Um, in both configurations with the center tap and with the uh, full bridge uh, rectifier. So if we take a comparison between both of them, what we can see is that the primary side in this one, in the center tap, we have four amps. And in the secondary side, we have around 14 amps. And in this case, it's kind of the same for the primary side. So almost the same, which makes sense because we are not changing anything in the primary side. But in the secondary side, uh, we have, of course, because it's only one winding uh, more current. Now, what is the impact from the transformer uh, perspective? So here, what I have is a design in a particular line where what we have done is take these waveforms from uh, our Suzuka simulator. Okay, so these are the waveforms that we have exported from our Suzuka simulator, um, we have done a design based on a PQ4040 uh, core. Um, to have a reasonable core loss, we have considered 20 turns. And then in the primary and secondary winding, we have lead to wire. For 20 turns in the primary side, four turns in the secondary side with the windings interleaved. Now, this is in the case of the full bridge fortification. So one primary, one secondary. Now, if we go to the center tab, in this case, we have one primary and the two secondaries. To do a fair comparison, we have taken the same core, same number of turns, and the same wires. But in this case, instead of having a single winding with, let's say, more current, we have the two different secondary windings. And the difference that we can appreciate is that if we take here a look, the core losses is 3.3 watts in the center tap, center tap configuration, and the only losses is also 3.3 watts. Now, if we go to the full bridge uh, configuration, of course, the core losses is the same because again, we have not changed anything in the primary side, but the winding losses are uh, slightly reduced because we are taking a better utilization of the window. So what I want to come up uh, or the conclusion about this comparison is that when it comes to the transformer, the full bridge uh, rectification will be always more efficient than the uh, center tap configuration. So at the end, depending on the power level and the current that you have in the secondary side, 
Uh, sometimes this one will be better, uh, but a, for the transformer, the full bridge uh, will be always better. Now, once we have the side, what to do uh, with the secondary side, we need to start thinking on the um, on what values should we put in the transformer ratio, the magnetizing inductance, the series inductance, uh, the output inductance, and I will talk later about the saturation. So let's start with the transformer tunes ratio. We need to design or to define the tunes ratio of the transformer. Um, so typically what we do is we uh, first take the minimum input voltage and the maximum input voltage, output voltage of the converter um, based on the maximum duty cycle that you want to get, you want to have, you get directly with this equation the ratio okay. that you need. Yeah. Can you do zoom in or full screen? Yeah. Yeah. Much better. Sorry. Thanks. So yes, I was saying basically uh, the ratio is given by the by the relation between the input voltage and the output voltage, well the the, the drop in the diodes and and the maximum duty cycle that you want to have, which normally is in the range of 0.6 to 0.7. Now. This is the simple equation, but, but there are a couple of things to consider here. One is uh, what is called the duty cycle loss, which at the end, uh, if we apply a certain voltage to the transformer, because of the leakage inductance, we will have a certain, uh, let's say, in time to, uh, to reach this point. And this is what is called the duty cycle loss. So the effective duty that we have in our converter is not the same that we are considering, but we have uh, a different one because of this voltage drop uh, generated by the leakage inductance. So this is one of the things that we need to consider. And the second thing and uh, most important one, which is the zero voltage switching range. So as I was saying at the beginning, uh, one of the, let's say, good things and important things of the phase shift full bridge is that we want to get CBS in the primary side. To do that, we need to ensure that we have enough energy in the primary, enough energy stored uh, at the commutation time so we can discharge the parasitic capacitance of the MOSFETs. And this is given by this equation. So uh, one half of the peak current at that moment and the kit inductance or the series inductance at the end um, is, gonna is gonna give us the energy that we need. And it should be bigger than that of the capacitors. So if we have a higher tunes ratio, this means that we have a smaller currents than if we have a lower tunes ratio. So this means that when we decrease the tunes ratio, we can account for more current and therefore it's gonna be easier to have zero voltage switching or we are gonna be able to extend the zero voltage switching range. Of course, this is uh, not for free. So if we decrease the ratio, we have more conducting current and therefore more conducting losses, uh, not only in the magnetic, but in the semiconductors. Um, but it's really uh, important or interesting to understand the both, uh, let's say, both solutions. So let's, let's take a look at it uh, from the transformer perspective. Again, uh, Lucas. Yeah. Uh, there is a question that I think that the, makes sense to answer right now. Sure. That basically uh, is, uh, if you can explain a little bit more uh, in detail or more slowly, um, how the uh, loss of the data cycle uh, works. I mean, why? I mean, why you have to take care and, and why is the leakage inductance? And um, this is a question by Romy Bompard. Yeah. So. At the end, um, we apply a voltage at the input side of the transformer. And if we look at the equivalent circuit here, uh, we do not have an ideal transformer, but we have an inductor in series with it, okay? So when there is a current flowing through here, there is a voltage drop happening here, okay? So this means that if I put here a certain voltage, I'm not seeing the same in, in here, but there is a certain voltage drop. Um, so the bigger you look at inductance, the bigger the voltage drop. So this means the less voltage you are getting to the primary side and therefore to the secondary side and the load. Um, so that's, that's basically it, that this duty cycle loss accounts for that, for 
how much you are losing here, depending on on the um, voltage that you have and on the current that you have and on the size of the leakage inductance. Um, that said, as as I was saying, um, here one important thing is what okay we are talking about the amount of carbon we need to get uh, zero voltage switching. Um, now, what is the impact on the on the transformer if we go in this particular case from a five to one tons ratio to a four to one tons ratio? So let's take a look at it. Um, what I have done is I have again uh, taken the um, well. One important thing I have not commented here in Suzuka, what we can do is once we simulate the once we simulate the the, the, com the converter, we can export the waveforms. So we can select which component we want to export the waveforms. Like I want to export the transformer waveforms. I can download this and then this CSV file I can um, import it in my transformer um, to get uh, those waveforms, which is what I have done here. Now, going back, we want to understand the difference between a 5 to 1 tons ratio and a 4 to 1 tons ratio, which I actually have it here. Okay, So in the 4 to 1 tons ratio, we are, as I was commenting, we have higher peak current, um, higher RMS current, okay? um, but because we need, uh, we have a, let's say, bigger output voltage, we need less duty cycle. So this means that the voltage seen at the primary side, if you see here is 288 volts, what while in the five to one to ratio, we are seeing 320 volts. So the impact of this is that the core losses with the bigger tones ratio are bigger 3.3 watts than the core losses with the lower tones ratio because we are seeing a lower voltage at the primary side. Of course, as we were commenting at the beginning, we have increased the current. So this means that the winding losses in this four to one to ratio is 2.85 watts, while the winding losses in this five to one, five to one to ratio is 2.6. But overall, if we think on the overall component, the five to one to ratio is giving me six watts, while the four to one to ratio overall is giving me one watt, which if we think on one kilowatt, is a significant difference. Um, so it is always uh, very important to just do not rely on the basic equations, but to take a deep loop, deep look uh, to different uh, possibilities, and always also do it with the full input and output voltage range. Just to be sure that the converter works in all conditions. Um, now, that said, the next or one of the other things that we need to define is the uh, magnetizing inductance that we, that we need. So here there are two options. One is that we define a small value. By a small value, I'm talking about an inductance in the range of 100 micro Henry's to 300 micro Henry's, more or less or up to even one millihenry, and then high value, which is above one millihenry. Um, so when do we want to have uh, small values? We want to have small values uh, when we want to extend the zero voltage switching range. So if uh, we take a look at here on the uh, voltage and current that we have, um, the current uh, that we normally have for zero voltage switching is depending on the load. So the bigger the load, uh, the more carbon we have uh, to achieve zero voltage switching. But at light load, this means that we have low current. Now, when we decrease the inductance, the magnetizing inductance, we can increase this peak current that we have at the commutation um, to extend the zero voltage switching. Of course, again, this is not for free, and this means that you will always have higher conduction losses um, also as full power, but this is one way to extend the zero voltage switching range. Another good thing is that the tolerance of the uh, inductance is reduced because to get this inductance, normally uh, you need a gap in the ferrite. So this means you can control better the tolerance. So this is in the range of uh, plus minus 8%. Now, 
this is one option. The other option, which is more typical, uh, what I would say more used uh, in the industry, which is to uh, rely on the inductance given by the core or get uh, a high value, uh, target a high value. Um, in this case, we don't use uh, a gap in the ferrite. So this means that the tolerance of the inductance is plus minus 25%. And then uh, also depending on the on the control mode of the of the phase full bridge, if you have uh, peak current mode control, then you need a certain slope of the current, uh, which means that you need a, a specific magnetizing inductance uh, that is given by this equation. Uh, like in this case, which is our case, we are targeting uh, 1.5 uh, millihertz inductance. Now we have the turns ratio, we have the magnetizing inductance. We need to, we have been talking about the CBS, um, but we need to, to, to define uh, what Series inductance uh, we need. So uh, this equation here give us what is the minimum inductance that we need to ensure CVAs from 50% load to full load. And basically, as um, you can see here, we have to, we need in this case 4.76 micro with a five to one uh, ratio. And with the four to one ratio, because we have higher peak current. We can account for a lower liquid, a lower inductance. So in this case, we only need three micro. You will see the impact now in, in the design. Now, okay, this is the value, but how to achieve it? How to reach this uh, 4.76 microhertz? There are basically three ways. One way, which is just have two components. So you have a transformer, you have an inductor. That's it. Um, so you can optimize the transformer design. You can optimize the inductor design. And probably in, in terms of efficiency is going to be generally uh, a really uh, good option, but in terms of size and cost, uh, it's going to be more expensive and it's going to take more space than the other solutions. Now, the other two solutions, which is to have uh, the leakage inductance, let's say the series inductance as the leakage inductance of the transformer. So this means we have a bad coupling of the transformer. Uh, we have a high, high leakage inductance that we will use as the series inductance uh, for the uh, CBS. Or the other option, which is what we call the emergence, which means that we have an integrated structure. We have the transformer on the bottom side, the inductor on the top side. Um, and then we have a compact structure where we can, again, optimize the transformer design, optimize the inductor, but everything is more compact and is taking less space. Now, today we are going to focus on the high leakage, on the ways to get what, what means high leakage and, and what could we do uh, that we need. So if I go to this uh, original five to one ratio, the target 4.76 micro. Now let's go again and let's check the, um, the signs. So here we have the original design where we have the secondary uh, side interleaved. So this means half of the primary, secondary side, half of the primary. Now, if we take a look at the leakage in that tans, it's 3.5 micro. We are targeting 4.7, so it's not enough. So it's good uh, because it, it's giving us, a, a, let's say, a value close to our target, but it's not enough. What can we do? to increase the leakage with the same winding. One thing we could do is just, um, sorry, it's not this one, is put uh, two, um, let's say, um, primary to secondary winding, okay? If we do this, the, the leakage inductance increases, but this is not for free because the, the power losses uh, increases as well and the temperature hits on the limits and still, this design uh, is not able to give us all the uh, leakage that we want. And the other way is that instead of having primary to secondary, we could do a split the winding. So we could put all the primary in the top, all the secondary in the bottom, which is what we call the two, well, what is called the two chamber. And here what we get is a very high leakage inductance, but it's so high that we will have a huge duty cycle loss and we won't be able to control the output voltage and output power converter. So that said, in our case, 
none of the uh, options could directly, uh, let's say, be feasible, and we would need to do a uh, inductor plus transformer. But this is if we go for a five to one tunes ratio. Now, if we go for a four to one tunes ratio, as I was commenting before, here the leakage inductance that we need is smaller, is three micro, because we have higher amount of current. So this means that here uh, I can check and I can see, okay, I have 2.3 microhertz um, with a 20 to 5 ratio. Now, what, what else can we do with the same core to increase the leakage? The leakage is directly affected by the amount of wire that you have. So this means that if we increase the turns, instead of being a 5 to 20, we could do a 6 to 24, and we run this. What will happen is that we will have more, let's say, winding length, and therefore we will have a uh, higher uh, leakage inductance. Let's see, let's see what we get, and let's see if this is closer to the three micro that we need. So we go here, and we get 3.1. So with the same spec, we have compared a 5 to 1 transformer with a 4 to 1 transformer. And now in this case, we have a leakage inductance integrated. And not only that, but we have a really uh, good performance in terms of losses, because now with the higher number of turns in the primary side, we can reduce the core losses while keeping a reasonable winding loss. And therefore, we have an optimized version of our transformer. Um, one more thing to add here uh, is that when you have two components, there is one benefit, and is that you can use clamping diodes. So it's very typical in the phase shift full bridge to have in primary side bridge an oscillation. Uh, well, and secondary side an oscillation because uh, and the capacitance of diode which creates voltage spikes so when you have two components uh, you can put some clamping diodes that uh, were proposed by Riedel uh, several years ago and this allows to clamp the voltage and have a much let's say uh, smoother uh, waveform so here in this case this was an example with a three kilowatt transformer we did a uh, long time ago and here we were able to reduce from 784 volts to 496 volts um yeah so once we have the transformer uh design we can talk about the output choke and here uh the definition or of the inductance that we need is based on the output current ripple so we normally uh, target a minimum output current ripple of uh, 20% and one important thing to note is that the switching frequency that we have is double that of the converter frequency so in this case, our target is uh, 22.4 uh, micro. Now, one question uh, at this stage is, should we go for a ferrite? Should we go for a powder? Uh, what should we do here? And the answer is, again, it depends on your current levels and on your inductance levels. In our case, you will see now, I will show you both the signs, the solutions, uh, well, the size could be similar. The ferrite is going to perform better. But again, here it depends. If you have a very high current and a, or a high, very high inductance, probably a powder core is going to be the best solution. But let's take a look at this case. So here I have done a, a design of the output inductor with this 22.5 microhenry commutating at 200 kilohertz, where we have a DC current of 21 amps and a peak current of 24 amps. Now, if we take uh, the cores that would be below 300 millidesla, uh, we take one with a medium uh, power density like the PQ3220, uh, which give us a gap of 1.2 mm and a total dimension of 33 by 20 by 27. What we get is a uh, really, I would say, good performance. So we get a total loss of 2.6 watts in the windings 
almost uh, negligible losses in the core because at the end we are using a ferrite with a very low AC flux. So this means that the core losses uh, are very small and therefore the total losses for out output inductor are uh, really good. Now, what happens with a powder core in this particular case? If we take uh, the same input, so 22.5, um, we get the same waveform uh, from Suzuka. Now, if we want to be uh, fair in the comparison, we need to take a similar size in terms of core and the whole component. So in this case, I have taken a powder core with a size of a T34-1912 uh, with two stacks. And in this case, what we get is that because we are using a powder core, we have a higher core losses. So before we have almost negligible loss in the range of 50 millivats. Now we have 1.16 watts. Um, in terms of the winding, it's, uh, it's kind of similar, but overall uh, we have 3.8 watts before we had 2.6 watts. So in this particular case, the powder core will give us a, a worse performance. Um, Arrived to this point, there is one important thing uh, that should be taken into account whenever uh, we are working with the output choke of, of AC Fulbrits, especially with powder cores, which is the saturation and the, let's say, inductance drop with current. So if we take a look at the inductance, as you know, with powder cores, the inductance is changing with the DC current. Now, what happens uh, with the inductor here and what happens with the converter? So what happens if we have uh, if we want to, let's say, or can we model this uh, in our simulation? And the answer is yes. What we can do is we can make use of a non-linear uh, inductor. And here, what we can do is we can define the inductance that we have for the different DC currents. And at the end, what we get is that the uh, current of the output stops to be a linear current, but you start to see uh, to see the, the the effect of the of the saturation of the inductor. So let's let's take a look at that. The simulation has finished. Now I can add one scope, check the output current, and um, take a look at it. And as you can see here, the you can see how the inductance is changing depending on the DC current. And it's really important to, uh, to then go back to your design and check how is the performance based on that. There is one important thing I have no mentioned to do this, uh, to show this uh, effect, I have increased the load. So the, the, let's say nominal operating condition is one kilowatt, but in this case, I'm simulating uh, 17 watts, uh, so 17 percent more, so around 1.2 kilowatt. So I can export these waveforms. I can download the CSV file. Um, now I can go back to my original design and check how is the performance with that, uh, let's say, effect of the saturation and of the overload. Yeah, as you can see here, the waveforms that we have taken from Suzuka. And now if we run the simulation, we have a bigger peak current, so we will have higher core losses and we have slightly higher RMS current, so we will have also higher uh, RMS losses. So this effect, it's something that should be considered. As you can see here now, the core losses increase significantly. Um, also the winding losses, which at the end lead to a thermal runaway of this component. If we were to use this choke, we would need some cooling. Otherwise it would be uh, with a thermal runaway. Um, and yes, so it is very important to take that into account. And it's also important to, uh, to simulate it. So we can do this here with um, yeah with this current inductance matrix. Um, that was it for today. We have still some time for uh, questions.
So uh, don't be shy, feel free to ask any question. Okay, well, thank you, Lucas and, and Manu. Well, there are already some questions. You can write your questions in the, um, in the box. Um, let's start for some of the questions. Uh, I mean, a lot of people have been asking, I, I have been answering uh, live about uh, why we were talking about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of that cycle. Um, and well, the, the, the answer is that uh, you can consider 0 0.5 a maximum in some cases, but also you can consider 100% and then just saying that 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 is the equivalent of 0 0.3 uh, if you consider 50% maximum. But in this case, um, uh, this is the way that uh, we were have considered. And also, uh, mm, there were a question that maybe, uh, Lucas, you can give more uh, um, detail is why you haven't choose 0 0.95, for example, and you just choose a maximum that is cycle of 0 0.7. Yeah, so here, um, normally this is a, let's say, rule of thumb in the design, uh, because at the end you need some room, like if you imagine you, you account for 100% jury, uh, then the, the, this is the theory in the, in the reality, you have a straight inductance in your PCB, you have a, a leakage inductance, you have inductance in your circuit that at the end means that you are not taking all that jury uh, in practice, so it's not recommended always to go to the limit. It's like if you are doing a duality bridge, you don't want to go to 90, exactly 90 uh, degrees of phase if you need to get some uh, degree of margin. So it's it's kind of a margin, uh, safe margin area that we take. Um, that's why normally we go to down to 0 0.7. Okay, well, I mean, just to add to this, uh, there is some uh, voltage drop in the diodes that you need to consider, then usually the, this could be uh, a couple of volts. Also, the that the cycle loss is dependent on the current and it'll be, that means that for maximum current, uh, the loss could be um, higher, I mean, the loss could be higher, then uh, you would be in risk of not getting the, the output voltage that you want to have under a low test step or something. Okay, next question. Um, uh, uh, the sudden rise in transformer current depends on the leakage inductance or transformer. Is a need? Um, I mean, the current rises because you are changing the the voltage from zero to the input voltage, mm -hmm. and at the end you get an inductor there. The, what the current is the slope. Depending on the on the inductance that you get, you get a different slope. Uh, but the current changes because at the end you are changing the voltage. Uh, yeah, I mean, actually, uh, um, uh, you are applying a voltage to, uh, to an inductor. And I think that what he wants to say, men say is which is the slope. And the slope is uh, is visited by the leakage inductance. Yeah. Um, but also you have to consider when there is, uh, I mean, you have to consider the, that there is a magnetizing that this fix is, uh, is, uh, is only dependent of the voltage. Okay, uh, next uh, question is, uh, how can know my required leakage inductance? Yeah, again, as, as I was showing in the slides, at the end, you have a capacitance in the output, I mean, the COSs of your uh, MOSFETs uh, that you need to discharge in the dead time, uh, in the dead time. So you need to have, I will share my screen again, uh, one second. I will share again my screen. So um, basically, you need to store enough energy to discharge the output capacitance of the MOSFETs. So the energy is stored in this series inductance. Um, so this is the, out, the output capacitance of your MOSFET. This is the voltage that you have uh, in your DC link. And then you need to ensure that the product of the peak current squared times the leakage, half of that, is bigger than the energy of the uh, capacitors. Okay, next question is, are GAN switches visible for phase shift pull bridge kind of topology? Yes, uh, I do not see why not. 
maybe Manu also can comment about how to model a little bit a switch uh, in the, in the, in Simba. I mean, uh, there is uh, any kind of suggestion from your side to improve the model of a switch at Simba? Yes, yeah, so um, currently in Simba, we use ideal switch model. So the same type of switch model that you're using where basically it's 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 either an idle uh, switch, um, so perfectly open or perfectly closed, or with a small RDS on and a forward voltage. Um, in Simba desktop, you have the option to import a thermal description file from a um, semiconductor manufacturer to basically estimate the uh, switching and conduction losses from uh, basically data sheet information. This is not available in uh, the, the, the online uh, simulators like uh, Suzuka. And we are currently working on a new uh, switch model that are a little bit like SPICE type switch model uh, for MOSFET, for basically wideband gap um, uh, semiconductors and IGBTs. And uh, this is something that is currently um, um, dev um, that we are developing, and we hope to release um, in 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 a in a few months. But right now, we don't we don't have those in Simba. Thank you, Manu. A uh, couple of more questions, and we will be closing. Then, if you have any question, please write write down the question. Even if it's just for the simulator, for the simulation, for Manu, for bridge design. Um, Lucas, there is a guy is asking, I mean, Dananjay Jadav, he is asking, can you please elaborate Dowell's principle for magnetic design? I think that the, it could be interesting to make some comments here. We could do a, a full webinar <laughs> about this. Um, at the end, with Dowell, you get the, the, the AC resistance of your uh, magnetic assuming you have federal currents and assuming you have a single layer, but here we have more than one layer. I mean, we have several layers in, in, in our windings. Um, so we are actually not using the well, but a different uh, winding uh, calculation of winding losses uh, model, because the well would be, uh, let's say, not as accurate as uh, you would like. Okay, uh, someone is asking if, uh if uh, it can be simulated or designed, I mean, which are the differences uh, for a 200 kilowatts? I mean, let me read the complete question. How should design more powerful converters? Let's say 200 kilowatts. Well, you need more space. <laughs> and you need, no, at the end, you need, I would say the principles are the same, but you, of course, there it's a matter of mechanical uh, integration and mechanical uh, Let's say there is a lot of mechanical work because at the end, if you have 200 kilowatts, even if your battery voltage is pretty high, you will have significant amount of current. But from the converter, I mean, from the architecture perspective, the selection of the of the inductances of the ratios, I think it's going to be the same. Uh, it's going to impact more, for instance, on a transformer. If you have a 200 kilowatt system, uh, maybe the inductance that you need is significantly higher, and therefore you cannot integrate it um, on the transformer and you have, you need two components. Um, but let's say the way of designing, I would say is, is the same. What it really changes is the mechanical part. Um, and of course the magnetics optimization will change also a little bit. Um, I will add that uh, 200 kilowatt converter. I mean, uh, usually when we design one of these converters, the switching frequency is much uh, lower than the effects are different because uh, you want to be worried more about, I mean, spikes at 200 kilowatts could be, uh, could, could kill your whole converter and sometimes uh, managing uh, the energy at the, uh, at these levels. Uh, most of designers, they use a lower switching frequency. Then the principles are the same, but at the end, the design um, problems that you need to solve are different, are completely different. Sometimes even just how to take out the heat, how to getting out the heat of uh, of your windings could be a real challenge because uh, the system is bigger, then you have more uh, winding inside of uh, the, I mean, losses in the windings and 
well, I mean, it's, the complexity uh, is uh, grows with the power. Um, if you increase the frequency, even more. Um, uh, there's a question if we can simulate uh, this snapper. Uh, sure, of course, you can simulate. And actually, I did this a few days ago. I ran a simulation, including the um, clamping diodes in the full bridge phase shift with an additional external inductor plus clamping diodes and was working perfectly. You can see the drop of the voltage of the clamping diodes in the waveform, then, of course. Um, the only thing or only consideration, maybe Manu have more uh, experience here, is that in the simulator, you have to take care with the time step. I mean, if you are running and you want to see effects at the one megahertz, then the simulation time and the time step of the simulation, you have to take care of that. And, um, and uh, this is the only thing that you have to take care, that uh, if you want to see one megahertz events, you need to run simulation, I don't know, maybe at 10 uh, time step. Uh, Manu, do you want to add something? Yes, no, that's exactly that. Uh, there is no problem in the Simba use a variable time step solver. So it is, so there is no problem in modeling snubbers and also in modeling parasitic, um, like if you want to, to, to simulate the, the, uh, the leakage inductance or the variable capacitor uh, um, or, um, in the semiconductor, you can add them as well. You just need, uh, as Chema uh, said, to have a smaller uh, time step. Okay, um, last uh, two, three questions. I mean, someone is asking uh, that the, he, I see, my way from we are at the high uh dead times it might be an effect of liquid liquid leakage or another um i think i can get this one uh if you have high dead times maybe you are having some um circulating currents uh because you are letting the a lot of time to do some oscillations uh, um, and you have to take care with that. I mean, the dead time in the full bridge phase shift is just to then low, I mean, to uh, to drop, I mean, to see how the voltage, uh, the BDS, the voltage in the semiconductors goes to zero or similar. But if you let a lot of time, then you start having some oscillations and then the waveform will get crazy. Then always you need to play from a start when have hard switching and then decrease and I mean increase the dead time until you have zero voltage switching and then just play there even if you are not able to get um, zero voltage switching it's not a big problem but uh, you have to uh, to take care with that and also you have to consider that the the brands I mean there are two legs and you can you need to calculate or I mean just to adjust both dead times. I mean, are not exactly the same. I mean, the, the systems are not very symmetrical. I mean, perfectly symmetrical. Then you have to adjust uh, manually or, well, manually or with uh, some simulations. Um, which is better, LLC or phase full bridge for, let's say, five kilowatts? What is your, uh, put voltage frames. That's one of the points. Um, because uh, for answering that question, there are many things to consider. What is the output voltage, output voltage range? Um, it is going to be like a single operating condition, then probably the LLC is going to be more efficient because it's uh, really, uh, uh, let's say, optimized for a single, uh, let's say, operating condition. Now, if your output voltage range is, is uh, pretty wide, then in the LLC, you start having a wide uh, frequency range. Uh, which means, for instance, you go for lower frequency, then you have problems in the core, if I'm talking about the transformer. And if you go to higher frequencies, you have problems in the windings and also in the semiconductors and so on. So I would say we should take a look at the uh, output voltage range. Um, yeah. Uh, what control strategies prefer in full bridge phase shift? Analog control or digital control? If you see digital control, some reference for the digital control will be appreciated. Um, you can do both, but uh, I would say that uh, there are great chips for, let's say, analog control with uh, a lot of uh, reference designs. And actually, uh, I have used digital control, but for the final industrial product, it could be more difficult to integrate. But I don't know if uh, Lucas or Manu, do you want to add something for this question about analog or digital control? 
I have to say that all I think all the full breeds we have done uh, so far are analog control um, because it's simple and, and easy to implement. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, can these FX be manually introduced into the perfect circuit and get back the values according to the requirement? To be honest, I don't get it very well. The question. Uh, I suppose that if uh, there is any way to do automatically the design of the circuit and the magnetic, and the answer is that in the in at Simba and at Suzuka we have some templates. Then there is a full bridge template. Then just the circuit is already there. You just need to put your parameters and simulate and get these uh, waveforms and run a simulation of frenetic and get the magnetics. Yeah, I would say yes. Uh, um, um, let's see the last question because we are already uh, almost in the limit of the time. Um, I, thank you for the interesting webinar. My question is, according to you, what is the maximum value that we can achieve with uh, a uh, phase shift full bridge converter. Maximum value of, of power. I suppose, I suppose power, yeah, I guess. I've seen up to uh, 50 kilowatts, that's for sure. Uh, but I think more. I mean, I'm, I'm I seeing myself up to 100, 50, but I think that's more. Yeah. Hundreds of kilowatts. I mean, the, actually, the full bridge phase, well, the full bridge, uh, the phase if at the end is the kind of modulation, but uh, for high power, uh, for really high power, uh, 200, 300 kilowatts, uh, I think that is the most common topology. And yeah. Manu, I mean, what I've seen say? in uh, like battery charger, you know, 200, 200 kilowatt uh, battery charger, it's basically a few uh, 50 kilowatt cells that are stuck. Uh, together, yep. so uh, I, I will say around fifty, but um, what as well? Okay, then um, that's all for today, guys. I mean, uh, next month uh, in February, uh, one of the I think that is the last uh, last Tuesday of the month or something like this. I, I'm not sure, but uh, we will have another webinar. Uh, for designing magnetics and topologies, and and uh, we would like we would love to have uh, Manu again in the webinar if he wants to join us. And um, again, as we said at the beginning, um, users of uh, of uh, the pay users of, of 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 Simba and Frenetic, they can ask for a free trial if they want to test the other tools. And for the rest, I mean, I invite you to have a demo uh, demonstration or technical meeting with us and, and we would love to to show to you the capabilities of these tools but also have discussions about your projects what is uh, the problems you are facing with uh, circuit design circuit simulation magnetic design magnetic simulator and um, thank you thank you lucas thank you manu and thank you everyone thank you thank you lucas thank you Chema. thank you bye everybody bye